Hej. Um, vi giver den lige et, et minut uh, mere, før vi starter. Um, se, klokken er lige blevet 14. Så skal vi være sikre på, at skærmen virkede. Men I må meget gerne lige uh, sige til, hvis I, kan, hvis, I kan, hvis I kan høre mig. Der er sådan et questions-felt, I kan, I kan skrive i. Og der kan I altså også bare skrive til mig, om jeg kan... Uh, om I kan kan høre mig. Yes, godt, wonderful. Jeg er lidt. Se, deltagerantal ryger hurtigt op. Wonderful, tak fordi I skriver. Jamen, skal vi så ikke bare lige så stille gå i, uh, gå i gang? Jeg kan se, at vi har ramt et øh, plateau. Så øhm, jamen, øh, velkommen til dagens webinar. I dag skal vi snakke om API'en til 5 design. Og øhm, før vi lige går, går sådan helt i gang, så er det klassiske. Vi bruger GoToWebinar som platform til, til at hoste webinaret. Og hvis ikke I kender det fra før, så kan I skjule og vise panelet med, med knappen her. Og har I spørgsmål, så skriver I dem endelig i questions feltet. Så alt hvad I skriver her, og de, nu er det jo noget af det på engelsk i dag, eller det meste er på engelsk fra, fra Marco, men, men I skriv hvad I har lyst til her, jeg skal nok oversætte til engelsk, hvis det er nødvendigt, at Marco han svarer. Så jeg kan svare løbende på ting, men øh, lige meget hvad, så skal vi nok forsøge at samle op til sidst på ting, der ikke skulle være besvaret, eller ting, der er relevant for, for, øh, for alle sammen. Ja. Øh. Marco er, er med i dag. Han er vores uh, product owner for, for API'en. Ja. Som I, I kan se, han kommer fra Italien og sidder også i Italien og arbejder. Så er der mig. Uh, Kasper, jeg er ja, customer coach, technical sales her fra, fra, fra Danmark. Men i dag vil det primært være Marco, der driver, uh, driver showet. Uh, men jeg starter lige på dansk med kort at introducere til API'en og hvordan den fungerer. Hvad, hvad I ligesom kan finde ting for os. Så API... Uh, Helt basalt er et, øh, en måde at, øh, at kommunikere med en applikation på. Og i det her tilfælde der er det så fem design, I gerne vil kommunikere med. Så der er lavet en API, som gør, at I kan tilgå, jeg vil ikke sige alle, men rigtig, rigtig mange af vores funktioner, uden selv at åbne fem design. Så I har som bruger en masse ting, I gerne vil have ud af fem design, og der kommunikerer I igennem API. Og det er så her, at, øh, at det er, hvad skal man sige, at Marco kommer i spil, for han vil fortælle, hvordan man gør. Men sådan overordnet set, så har I to måder at kommunikere med den på. I kan gøre det visuelt, som er den, der er blevet meget populær. Øhm, og så er der den klassiske tekstbaserede kodning. Og de har været deres fordele. Øhm, jeg tænker, at visuel kodning er meget nem for, for langt de fleste at komme i gang med. Vi har en klar anbefaling til hver af de to typer. Visuel kodning, grasshopper. Tekstbaseret kodning, c sharp Så Grasshopper er det, vi understøtter bedst med visuel kodning, altså det, vi fokuserer på og understøtte. Der er også mulighed for noget Dynamo, men det er ikke, altså det er ikke noget, vi, vi, vi understøtter øh, mere. For tekstbaseret kodning, jamen der er, API'en er skrevet i c sharp så det ligger lige til højre benet, det er, det er virkelig godt at, 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 at bruge den øh, dertil. Grasshopper er det her meget nemme, øh, hvad skal man sige, visuel kodningsprogram, I har alle de her knapper, så de her funktioner, som I kender fra 5 design, så I vil ikke være overrasket, når I kigger herinde, fordi det er det samme, som, som I er vant til at se, og der er jo mange af dem her, der er skjult, fordi jeg ikke har, har zoomet helt ud, men der er så mange funktioner herinde, øh, som, øh, som I kender i forvejen. Så kan man for eksempel lave sådan noget som det her, øh, folk kalder det jo sp- spaghetti, men øh, ja, sådan er, sådan er det. Det er meget visuelt igen. Det er noget mere intuitivt øh, at følge for nogen. Og med lige præcis det her script, der kan man lave en bro som den her. Så jeg har bare været inde på vores, øh, vores GitHub side og hentet et eksempel ned på min computer. Og så har jeg øh, relativt kort tid efter fået, fået den til at tegne den her konstruktion i 5 design. Og fordelen med det her er så, at man kan trække i nogle parametre i Grasshopper scriptet. Og så opdatere den automatisk modellen med geometri og laster. Øhm, dertil. Bruger man C-sharp, så er det jo klassisk tekstbaseret kodning. Her er et eksempel på, på tekst, der genererer understøtning, og noget, der genererer uh, load cases i programmet. Men her kan man altså lave alle mulige ting. Det fungerer rigtig godt til, til små plugins, til ting, der altid lige skal lave det samme. 
Øhm, som I normalt set ville skulle lave i hånd øhm, og, og fik det, fik det deri og I behøver slet ikke at bruge noget andet øh, program til det altså, så er det bare direkte til, til femdesign for API'en, øh, nu kender I jo femdesign de fleste går ud fra, der har vi vores Wikipedia side, som det sted I ligesom kan gå hen til for information omkring femdesign for, for API'en der har vi en øh, docs side så fem design API Docs kan I skrive på Google for den nemmeste måde at komme, komme hen til den på, eller skrive linket her. Og det er så en, en, en Docs side, hvor I kan finde en masse dejlig information omkring API. Så det er et rigtig godt sted at gå hen, når I skal starte. Nu trykker jeg bare på Docs, og så kan I se en introduktion til, til API'en her lidt om, om Grasshopper og C Sharp. Så de to ting, jeg har nævnt. Der er Getting Started afsnit til begge to, så hvad skal I bruge for at komme i gang? Og så har de begge to en hel masse eksempler, der ligger herinde. Um, Ja, som I kan bruge til, til ligesom at teste af, så I kan se, hvad der øhm, I, I kan bruge den til. Så er der også et forum, så er I sådan et, et diskurs øh, hjemmeside, som det bliver kaldt. Øhm, her kan I også skrive, øhm, skrive på, på nettet, hvis der, er, der ligger et link direkte heroppe i, øh, altså i docsiden til, til community, så kommer man også derind. Det er jeres, øh, se det som slags support side direkte. I kan bruge klassisk support, men i, med den her, der kan I ligesom skrive jeres problemer ind, og så vil det være øh, enten andre bruger eller Marco, øh, øh, som går ind og kigger på, hvad jeg skriver, og hjælper med at svare på, jeres, øh, svare på jeres spørgsmål. Så det er meget interessant læsning. Det er noget, der er startet op øh, altså for kort tid siden. Det var slutningen af sidste år, så, øh, så det vokser øh, øh, lige så stille. Ja. Så den sidste ting, jeg lige vil nævne af steder, hvor I finder noget omkring API'en, det er GitHub. Og her ligger alt muligt. Så her ligger selve koren til, til, til API'en, så I kan hente det her ned direkte fra C Sharp. I kan også finde alle eksempler her. Så alle de eksempler, I vil kunne hente fra den anden side, der vil man normalt blive henvist til GitHub-siden, for her kan I finde alle de relevante filer. Så hvis der er nogle store XML-filer, I skal bruge med tværsnit eller hvad end det kan være, så ligger de alle sammen inde, i, øh, inde, inde, på GitHub, øh, inde på GitHub-siden her. Og sådan hænger det sådan sammen. Man kan næsten vandre fra den ene side til den anden side uden problemer. Så vil jeg lige hurtigt, inden jeg giver ordet videre til Marco, reklamere for vores øh, API-event, der kommer her til, til, til juli. Så i Aarhus på Navitas her, der kommer Marco til Danmark, og han vil så øh, holde sammen med mig et, et event, hvor, hvor det eneste, der er på programmet, det er API. Så fra 14 til, til 17, I er meget velkommen til at scanne QR-koden her i, på, på sliden for at komme direkte ind til tilmeldingssiden. Det er gratis. Der er ikke noget, der I skal sådan set bare møde, møde, møde op. Ja, um, yeah. det var egentlig det, jeg vil sige for i dag, så nu giver jeg ordet videre til til Marco, og som sagt, så holder vi en, en, en Q&A til, til sidst, så bliver så bliv endelig hængende. Så ja, uh, yeah, that was all from me. Uh, Marco, the wheel is yours. I will just quickly yeah. make you a presenter, so you can share your screen. Yeah, let's see. I can do show my screen. Okay, can you see my PowerPoint? I can. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks, Casper. So let's get started. Okay, so let me tell you something about me so that you will uh, get an idea of what I'm doing with the company and also what I've done in the past. I mean, I'm currently working as an API developer in Strusop from Florence, as Casper said. And previously, uh, I was working as a structural engineer. So my background is not IT or computer science, but is uh, just um, uh, structural engineering. Let me move the GoToWebinar uh, page. That is kind of one. And usually, and I also do teaching in um, in some university like the AAA uh, Architectural Association of London. And prior to working with the API in fan design, I was using all kind of sort of uh, tool for uh, for for engineering, and that's how I got into programming and API. And in my little career as engineer, I was work, I was dealing with complex geometry. And as you can understand, doing this kind of analysis and geometry manually, like in an old fashioned way, is not really suitable. And uh, this is one other example, like timber structure, really free form, 
where I mean doing it manually will be almost impossible. This one, Burning Man, where you can really see where like um, a programming a programming workflow will definitely help because I mean it's like a trust, it's really repetitive, and uh, that's how API can really leverage itself. And this is just a, a fancy picture of the structure that has been done through some API. But let's go into the real topic. So fan design API. So I will try to don't overlap what Casper said, but this is who, who is working on it. And it's mainly me, Andy, who is doing the development. And then on the side, there, uh, there is Joanna and Andreas, who are mainly working with replying to customers, doing support, and do some other kind of, uh, uh, of webinar. And, oh. Let's go to next. And um, but what it is with API? So basically, the API is a software or is a tool that allows the communication mainly from Rhino to Fan Design and vice versa, and also from coding like C Sharp to Fan Design, but also Fan Design to C Sharp. And um, I'm really, I really want to point out that the communication is bidirectional because not all the software are able to do that. I mean, it's kind of simple from a programming point of view to communicate, let's say, from Rhino to fan design, but it's not the same uh, easy to communicate from fan design to Rhino. So bear in mind that this one is a really uh, powerful. Uh, point of our API. And I will show you what that means in, in some examples. And I mean, um, our API is open source. And that means that if you are a coder yourself or your company has a team of developers, you can just take our code, make it your own and do any kind of manipulation. And if you want, the code that you develop, you can push it back so we can just reuse it and give it to the community. Or, I mean, you are free to take it private uh, to, for, your, for your scope. And what it's about, I mean, this webinar today is mainly focused on visual programming, in this case, Grasshopper. And this is, um, this is how a programming, uh, sorry, this is how a visual block programming language looks like. So you have all kind of spaghetti, and as, a, as an Italian, I know what spaghetti, what spaghetti looks like. And basically the code goes from left to right, and you can just highlight what is going on reading at um, each component. And during the example, we will just highlight some of them, and we will go through some example. And I want to tell you that if you are a fan design user, most of the components, they will be pretty similar to you. Even the icon, they look the same, and even the input uh, names convention is really, really similar to the software itself. And what we can do with the API, this is just uh, several pictures that highlights what it, can, what it can be done. I mean, we can do static analysis, so that means that we can run load cases, load combination, we can run eigenfrequencies, for example. We can run I mean, eigenfrequencies, not only for the beam, but for any model. And you can do also some post-processing through Rhino. So you don't have, if you want, you don't have to use fan design graphical user interface to see the output, but you can just do it, all of it with data, basically through the API. And this is a, a buckling analysis. Then we can also run design with design group. So design groups, they really get uh, powerful when we use with the, with the API because you can modify on the fly the number of groups that you specify. So in a truss, for example, we know that the diagonal, uh, we try to make them uh, as similar as possible because I mean, the contractor will just say, sorry, why do you make each beam different? So with design group, we can iterate, do, you, do I want only one type of diagonal? Do I want two, three, four, and so on. So design group with API, really excellent tool to use. Uh, with, plastic, uh, with, plas with plastic data, now it's uh, really convenient to do also some kind of connection through the API. Uh, we all know probably idea statica, and idea static is probably great when you have a really common uh, kind of connection, but when you get, into something that is not really repeatable, API is definitely gonna work better because I mean you have the freedom to do to draw any kind of geometry with the knowledge of any CAD any CAD environment. So parametric connection is something that you can really leverage with API. And then something that really 
uh, Stripe, I mean, it really catch the, um, it's how to say, the, the, the intention, the, I mean, really catch the young engineers is the optimization. So with API, we can, uh, we can run any kind of optimization through, through the use of the data. And nevertheless, we can also run complex geometry. I mean, API is definitely working really, really well in case of complex geometry, but it doesn't have to be used only if we have complex geometry in our project. So, but this is just one case where uh, API is definitely working really well. I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of different <laughs> scenarios where API can really be used. These are, for example, it was to design a concrete bin. So even with the API, we can now get information about the interaction volume, I mean, the capacity of any type of beam. So this is an example in, um, in, um, in Grasshopper or, or Rhino. And next slide. Okay, community, um, sorry, about community, as Casper said, I mean, community is, uh, is kind of growing. We have uh, several users. Some of them, they also like to share what they are doing with the, with the others. And I want to show you what people are doing with the API. For example, there is an example from Amelie. And uh, let's see if the video will work. Okay, so Amelie, in this case, has created uh, an app in a Windows application. As you can see in this model, there are no loads. And what she's doing is to create the loads in a special way in Excel. I mean, we are engineers, we, we like Excel. So what she's doing, I mean, what she has done with, with uh, her programming skills was to create uh, a Windows application that is now proprietary of Neras, the company. And basically now she said, I'm gonna put in a super cool Nira software. So in this software, she's putting the Excel file where she has all the information about loads. She is now putting the reference model. And now she's transferring the loads to Fem Design. So now the software is running and Fem Design is opening. And now this model has all the loads. As you can see, they're also kind of complex. So this has been done because in the company, apparently they need to do this kind of workflow several times. And so basically the work of one can be used through all the companies. So it's a kind of scalable work. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, and then there is a case from Marco Intelisano. He's a structural engineer and has used the API mainly to transfer complex, I mean, a bridge geometry is not that complex. I mean, it's a, it's a simple bridge that that you have in Norway. So he has defined this script where he can just modify the model on the fly. And as you can see on the left, now there is Tecla, but later on, he will show that the same model, yeah, now has been pushed to, to fan design. And this project, uh, Apparently, this is what he what told me. He saved him, uh, I don't know, probably five months because basically they, they had to do, let's say, 10 bridges. They, they, have, they all have the same, the same geometry in a way, but they have maybe different length, different span, uh, different span. And in this case, uh, parameterizing uh, the, his, his project, let's say, it saved him a lot of time. And the company has done really some nice revenue on it. And okay, let's go to the next. And another example is from David, another engineer from Sveco. And in this case, he has defined a fully parametric model where he wanted to maybe see how many columns the project should have, which kind of bracing. This is just him modifying the parameters. And the same is gonna happen in this slide. If I go a bit far. With the API is also applying different elastic modules and different plasticity resistance to the to his pile. And now it's probably going to click to open frame design. Let me go a little bit faster. Yeah. So frame design now it's opening and we can see the model. And what is nice about this workflow is that you don't have to stop at the first iteration if you are kind of designing something. I mean, you can iterate and see what's the optimal, uh, the optimal solution. 
Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, I mean, in case you want to learn how to get started, this is our documentation page. As Casper said, just go on Google and look for Fem Design API Docs, and something like this should show up. Okay, but it's now time to do a live demo, so you can really understand uh, how it is working with the with the API. Okay, so what we are gonna do, and this one is called Simple Beam. And it will call, it will also highlight how the API means interoperability. So you don't have to use only Fem Design, but you can use Fem Design from Excel. And this is something that happens really often. And then, really briefly, we can also have a look at a really quick optimization. And this means that, from a broad point of view, with Simple Beam, we will see how to create and I mean, how to create an, a model. While uh, with optimization, I will also highlight how you can read and update and delete elements from a model. So in API, this one is called CRUD, CRUD. And CRUD means create, read, um, update, and delete. So this is what we are going to show you, to show you now. So let me give you a super quick uh, feeling on how the software works. So let's say that you just want to define an object, in this case, a circle. So this is a circle. You can define some input. In this case, it's asking for input plane. That will be the even the center and the radius. Let me say that I put a value between one and five. So with one, basically, as soon as I move the parameter, this component will be will be will be called and we will see a change so for example if i have a circle and i divide it in uh, in 10 points let's say by default is 10 i will use another parameter let's say between 5 and 20 sorry 5 and i need to change 5 and 20 okay it doesn't wait so as soon as I put five, the number of points are changing. But at the same time, if I go back and I change the radius, even the point will be will, will remain on the on the curve. So this is basically what the parameters uh, uh, define in our in our workflow. But let's get into a real example. But before doing that, I want to show you that what what our toolbar looks like. As you can see in the top, there are all type of uh, groups. And these groups are, uh, we try to create these groups uh, clustering, let's say, the, the, the object inside and design. So we have foundation, we have supports like point, line, and surface. We can define any kind of bar. So bar, beam, taper, bump, a taper, column, and taper beam. You can also apply back in length, eccentricity, all type of uh, object. Also loads, we have point, line, load combination. And our API now has been developed since uh, four years, more or less, and has been actively developed by me and Andy in the last two years. So that's why we can basically get access to any type of information in the software and what it's really interesting from from a, from a user point of view is also this live link that it uh, it enables it enable it enable the user to communicate directly with the software but let's see into our example let me block the solver i close this one that we don't need uh, let's see beam application okay beam application okay let me run equal false i'll unlock the solver okay let me see probably something is loading okay no uh, let me give you a quick um, introduction so um i cannot move this one sorry one second one little issue with fan design maybe i can go to view window other quick quick tools okay, window and then we can place it back okay it's still in the same location which is fine uh let's let's remove it other window quick tool um i mean fan design um in general 
it can also be used to analyze a simple beam. I mean, this is one of the tasks that uh, has been asked also to some people. And most of the time, um, engineers, they probably have their own Excel spreadsheet or they maybe use a, a different software because maybe they think that it's quicker to do that. But with API, I want to show you that because we have access to all kind of information or let's say functionality of the software, you can just even design a simple beam from the API without using the software. So this is what I'm going to, to show you. So for example, in this, uh, in this Grasshopper script, I have defined some input, let's say beam length, five meter. So in this case, like, okay, I want to design a beam that is five meter long. Okay, I want to design it, but in reality, in this script, I also said, okay, I want to do a check. Then in here, we can define if the support are fixed or pin. This is just a little example. And then we also define the load cases. I mean, load cases, live load, so no, and then maybe the loads, the amount, I mean, uh, the linear load. It can be 15 kilonewton kilo per meter or 20 kilonewton per meter. And what's, what the script is doing, and I can show you from a far point of view, is to construct the model first. And I will show you how, for example, we create a beam. For a beam, we just place a component that is called bars beam. And this one takes a little bit of experience. Probably Grasshopper doesn't have a super steep curve for, uh, for the API, but I mean, it requires some kind of effort. But if you go in bars, there is bar beam. And in bar beam, we need to, do, to specify the geometry, in this case, our curve. The material, in this case, we have just got S355 from material database and material get name. And the same for section. Section has been filtered in this case. We can have all kinds of section. And we, and we said, let's select HEB and HEB 300. So that's how we create a beam. I mean, and the same can be done for point support. I mean, there are specific components for every type of click that you basically do in FEM design. I mean, FEM designer, we have point support, the same we have it with the API. And so the first step was to construct the model. The next step is to define the analysis. And the analysis has been set up in this way. We enable the connection, we open the model, we run the analysis, and then we run the design. And I want to show you how it looks like if we run the, the script. So I'm just going to do uh, true, so run equal true. So now fan design is basically opening our beam, is running the analysis. As you can see, now it's running the design. And now it's just validating the data with for the steel utilization check. And if I go back in, uh, in Rhino, I can see at the very end that I've done also the post-processing because the idea in this case of our simple beam application is to don't have to touch the to the to touch the software. As you can see, I just highlight the software to see what was going on, but it's not, I didn't really use it. In this case, we are interested maybe in the bar steel utilization. So I get the bar steel utilization and I can see that uh, I can see from here, sorry, that the value of the utilization in this case is like 80% because we have two load combination. One is 76, the other is 80%. And, but what if I want to have some um, sort of application that even my colleague can use? And what I've done after the post processing is to do a little script for visualization. So if I put my grasshopper on the left and Rhino on the right, so Rhino, let's go on the right, grasshopper on the left, Okay, let me do this. Okay, I will zoom in again. Okay, this one is basically the visualization of our analysis. So let's say if I have now a beam that is, let's say nine meter, and I want to design this beam. So basically the software should tell me which kind of beam should I use. I can just do, I will put nine, I do okay. Now, 
fem design it will do the analysis i can see it we just wait a little bit and yeah now we should see something in uh, in rhino yeah so in in the case of nine meter beam and with this kind of load what we get i mean what we should use is a, as a section HEB 280, where the utilization will be 92%. And the same script is so flexible that instead of the design, we can also do a check. So in this case, we can say the beam that I provided, and sorry, in this case, the beam that, that I provided is HEB 300. Can you please tell me if it's working? Maybe let's also make a bigger load. So it's more, it's more fun. I put 25, then I say, instead of design, let's do a check. I enable the analysis. So now the analysis is running. I can see it from here. And let's see what we will see run on. Okay, so in this case, the beam is not working. As you can see, utilization 106%. So that means that I should use a different, um, a different beam. And if you want, I mean, this, uh, this sort of simple application can also be extended. For example, say, okay, do we maybe want to run also run eigen frequency? Because this one is a kind of analysis that can help for comfort. I mean, we don't want the beam to be too bouncy. I press true. Now the analysis is running again. And we will see a different, a different value. So the frequency in this case is 17 hertz. I mean, as you can see, API is not only for uh, special structure, but it can also be used for super simple uh, application like this one. So maybe you don't have to pay for another software as you already have uh, uh, fan design. And let's go, I want to give you uh, a next step because I said that we will use also interoperability. And maybe you don't even want to set the parameter in this way because maybe they are kind of not really organized. So what you can do in that way, in that case, is to create the data in an Excel spreadsheet. So in this case, it's a really simple uh, case study, but it can, I mean, we can just extend from it. So in, I have an Excel file called data XLSX, where I said in the worksheet number one, I have geometry with five. Then I have loads like live load, snow load, and then the value. And then um, a worksheet called output. So what we can do instead of typing the value directly in the, in the software, we can just do it in Excel. So I'm gonna show you. Very, there are some, um, I mean, the the powerful part about the super is that there is a huge community behind, and what you see on the very top are all are all plugins created by others. So, for example, Fan Design, in a way, has contributed to make the super better because we are providing Fan Design for it, and other people has done the same. So in this case, there is a tool to read. Uh, Excel file, and uh, this one, as you can see, is reading uh, five. Oh, sorry, is still working. Yeah, sorry, not right now. Uh, I got the pop up, sorry, not right now. And as you can see, the value are taken from the Excel sheet. So if I change the value, instead of five, I put 12, I do enter. This one, it didn't become 12, sometimes happen. But if I do false and true, now it's 12, okay, it should update lively, but if it doesn't, you can do that. So that means that this value can be read with some data manipulation. For example, in here I have 12, in here I have live load and, live load and snow, and in here I have the value. So this means that I can now connect those output in the input. And now if I'm design is driven by Excel. Now the analysis is running again. The beam is not anymore five as before, but it's gonna be 12. The analysis is running and we will see. And we will see the output. Okay. And if you want to get it even far further away, 
you can also write the information back in the Excel spreadsheet. So after the visualization, I created a little script that is basically write the value back. So I'm gonna do enable. I'm going to write this data inside the worksheet. So if I go to Excel, now I can see that I have HB 300, the same as it, that it is in Rhino. I have 146, 117 kilogram, and so on. So technically, now you have a really simple BIM application and you don't have to pay for other software. But now let's have a look at something different where Fan Design API is used to, to modify a model. So if I go to example number two, okay. What we are trying to do now is to is to optimize this kind of uh, of geometry. And as an example, and it's something that it came it came up in my career uh, as an engineer, was to optimize the position of the columns. I mean, sometimes you have some sort of freedom, and you don't know if the column should go in the middle or maybe a little bit more uh, on the left or on the right. So with some automatic routine, we can try to, to solve this problem. And uh, let's see how we have done it. So the idea is that the model has been given, uh, I mean, has been done maybe manually in uh, frame design, most of it. And what we have is basically an STR file. I can show you if I go file, maybe open, and I go to optimize input model. So this is the model that you you maybe have completely done in frame design. So I haven't done it nothing with the API for this one. So what what we can do? Let me close this one so it doesn't break the example that I'm going to show you. What we can do with API is to read the model inside Grasshopper. As you can see, this model read from file is taking this input model STR, fan design file, and it will return a fan design model. So this one is basically our fan design object, as we say in programming. And if we, this fan design object can be manipulated. So what I'm doing, for example, is to say model deconstruct. And when I deconstruct, I can see that I have six pins. I have one shell. Let's see, yeah, it doesn't show up. Yeah, I have one shell and I have several loads, several load cases. So what we want to do is to define a little routine that allow us to move the column automatically. So let me show you first that from this model, I can take the shell and if I do shell deconstruct, I can really see the geometry also in, in Rhino and something really, really powerful. And I mean, the logic in my script in this case is to optimize the position of the columns, but the column should always stay around this edge. So with some uh, grasshopper component, I take the, the curves on the edge and I say, okay, in this curve, I want to get some, some points and this point, they should be placed along the length. And in order to set a point along the length, we can just use evaluate curve. And this evaluate curve is basically a value between zero and one. I mean, if we provide a value between zero and one, we will get a point that is in the, let's say in the normalized length of the, of the curve. As soon as I do that, I mean, I can take the point, I can project them and add my column. So those are my column. So probably a, a solution like this is not really optimal. And uh, yeah, we can probably use our engineering mind to start moving this point manually. But the idea is not to use our mind, I mean, to find where it goes, the point, but is to use such an algorithm to, to find the, the optimal position. And uh, let me just show you that as soon as I have the new position of the column, I'm just creating a beam as before. But in this case, instead of creating a new one, I'm just modifying the beam that I had in the model. So as you can see, in model 
deconstruct, I can get my six beams. And from six beams, I mean, these six beams can be modified. And in this case, the beam is modified using a new curve. Technically, I can also update the beam with a new material or section, but in this case, we just want to modify the position. And as soon as we have the new beam, we can just create the new model. And this new model, it basically has the same information as before, but instead of having the previous beam, is now having a new one. So now that we have a model, we can just run the analysis. So we just run the analysis once. As you can see, this one is a component that it will run the analysis. And I'm also asking for some results like point support reaction and other displacement. So I do run. Now FEM design will, uh, will open. It's here, little. I'm telling FEM design to don't maximize, to make it a little bit faster. Okay, it's running. Now this component will become gray. Yeah, and here we go. As you can see now, this component has done the job and we have model as an output. Basically the model that we analyzed is also the output. And then we have some output like finite element and results. The results in this case are the point support reaction nodal displacement. And because I've asked Fan Design to give me these two values, I was able to create this picture. So what you see, orange blue, are basically the highest and the smallest deflection, where orange in this case is like zero, is usually in the other way around, and blue is the highest value. And what you see on the on the column are the reaction forces. So technically speaking, if I now going to change the position of the columns, like in this way, I do, I don't know, randomize, we can see that maybe this reaction from 475, it will become a different value. So now from design, it's running. I said minimize so we don't see it. Okay, it's done. Okay, now the column, they just went all on the right. So it's probably not the best in terms of displacement. So how do we tell uh, to get super to optimize this column. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, algorithm to do that. What we use in this case, as it's already built in in, um, in the software, is called Galapagos. So Galapagos is, uh, is a genetic algorithm solver that uh, allows to modify some inputs in order to minimize or maximize one output. So in this case, it's said that our output is the displacement I already have the displacement. So this one is getting the nodal displacement. This one is, is, is translating the vector. I mean, it's giving me the length of the vector. So what we want to do is to get the maximum value. So the key, this one is just following the order of the nodes. This one is just from the smaller to the big one. In this case, I'm just taking uh, the first item of the reverse list. That means basically the biggest value. And with Galapagos, I'm gonna say, okay, this one is my fitness function. Okay, please optimize this one. And what do you want to, to modify? So what we do is to, I'm just moving close to, to my parameters. And the parameters are this one, and this one. Okay, so I mean, we will not have time to see the, 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 total, the total optimization, but if I click, double click on this one, I can say, okay, I want to minimize, not maximize. And then I can just say, okay, start the solver. So I will just start the solver. Okay, and now from design, as you can see at the bottom of my screen, has been started. So first analysis, it's happening. Now fan design, it will close and run. in run we will see a different geometry. Let's see. 
The first one is, was basically the initial structure. The second one, it will be a different set of parameters and the geometry will change. I mean, now Rano is suffering because we're also doing the webinar. But if you have a look at on the left where we have the gene pool, this gene pool is gonna, is gonna change during the time. Yeah, now different gene pool and different geometry. So over the time, what we see here in Galapagos uh, windows, we will start seeing a graph. And this graph, it will basically show us uh, how the optimization is converging to a solution. I mean, let's see if the next iteration will give you some graph. But as you can see, also in Rhino, is changing uh, the, the preview. And this is basically how we can uh, use the API to do also optimization. And I just want to, I would just want to highlight that this kind of optimization is not possible through FEM design as a software. FEM design is used in this particular case as a calculator. So FEM design is giving us all the outputs, but the algorithm that runs the analysis is from uh, third parties. So this is something that can happen. Okay, I mean, we will not be able to see the solver finishing. And um, okay, I think uh, it's all from me, actually. Wonderful. Thank you, Marco. Um, <laughs> we, we have just one question at the moment, and actually I expected that one. So Johannes is asking if you have any experience using artificial intelligence for programming with the API. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so basically, so there is a user who I started to use, I mean, so let, let me rephrase it. So it really depends what we want to achieve because I mean, now artificial intelligence is probably really, really famous because of ChatGPT, where you can just ask maybe to fan design, can you please draw a building uh, with eight stories, uh, concrete and so on, and it will just do it. So that's one particular case of AI. But another case is to maybe do design exploration. I mean, what is cool about having the API is that if you are really into machine learning and AI, you need data. So when you do training, you need the data. And the API can be used to generate those kind of data. So in that sense, I have one side project where I'm just trying to train a slab. So the idea is that, um, let me explain. Let's say now with Fan Design, we can run uh, plastic analysis. And um, plastic analysis, depending on the amount of load, they can maybe take, uh, I don't know, five, four minutes. But if we have an already trained model where we have all the data about this lab, we can just have this analysis in one second because then the data have been generated before. So that's my only experience with AI and FEM design API. But I know, for example, I don't know if I can tell, but we are working uh, in our company, <laughs> maybe I will be in trouble, but we are trying to, to be able to ask to, the to our website, I mean, to our, basically we want to have a documentation uh, based on AI. So you don't have to go through all the doc, the PDF, but you can just ask, uh, can you tell me how, how do I create a beam? And the AI will explain you. So that's my experience, but in a way, yeah, AI can be used from you with the API. So you don't have to wait for um, Strusoft to use AI. And this is something that I really like in a way, but it really depends which kind of user you are. So the one who wait or the one, basically the one who use AI or the one who create AI. I hope I reply to your question. I, th I, th I think you did. In, uh, my personal experience, I um, I used uh, ChatGPT to uh, to help me with some C-sharp scripts and it was um, was way easier than I thought it would be. So it, it's very clever, but you need you need to know something when you do that. But it, it is it's a good it's a good help if you want to get started. 
but I have um, like there are no more questions. You you can still if if you want to please ask some ask some questions. We will hang around for a few more minutes. Um, in this case, and please yeah, let us know what yeah, you think. Just... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, in general, I want to say while we are here discussing or waiting for question, uh, I I want to say that I mean API are basically is a programming. Uh, I mean with API you get access to any kind of information in the model, so it's really up to you to decide how you want to use it. So in this particular webinar, we just try to highlight that you can just use it in case you create a simple application that you can reuse again and again. In this, in the first example, in the second example, we try to highlight that you can also use it in a kind of as a tool to do your own design, not only as a tool to do a check, something that in is in to be done really quickly, but something that you can really work with it along, and it's definitely something possible. But there are all kind of scenario. I don't know. Maybe people uh, they use it uh, for uh, only modifying. Uh, uh, a model. I saw. I know that a guy he has to run twenty models, and he just used the API to run twenty models. So he was running. So for each file that he has in a folder, he was running the model and generating the documentation automatically. Because I mean, with API we can also generate documentation. So instead of I don't know clicking to the model and then click on documentation, say buzz. I mean, it really take time and it's also kind of boring. He has done a script to just do it automatically. So, I mean, it's really up to you to decide how you want to use it. Yeah, <laughs> almost endless possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, well, one more. Is FemDesign limited to Rhino or can it be used with other CAD programs? Um, mm -hmm. So the API is written in C-sharp, okay? So that means that what we are providing is a, is a tool already um, ready to be used in Rhino, okay? But let's say if you want to use it in a different CAD environment, you should basically do it on your own. I mean, it's possible, but you need to write your own code. I'm thinking, let's say about maybe Blender. So in Blender, we can use Python, and in some way, you can use Fem Design API even in Blender. But I mean, we decided to invest in Rhino because I mean, I think it's the best, <laughs> technically speaking. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, well, that, that's that's it for the questions. So I think that's going to be it for today. But if you have any questions, please just email directly um to to me if um if there will be any so i'll just say thanks for joining and i i hope you enjoyed it and as i said if you have any questions please contact us um and then just just try it get started <laughs> yeah so uh yeah thanks for today Bye, everyone.